attending today's live webinar, In Vivo Models for Attention Deficit Hyperactive Disorder, presented by Dr. Jean-Charles Bizeau. My name is uh, Diane Boyer. I am the Marketing Manager at Neuroservices Alliance, and I am hosting today's webinar. This event is part of a series that features our partners, neuroscientist experts, and showcase their work to show you how Neuroservices Alliance can be your efficient CNS drug discovery partner. We know that your time is valuable, which is why our online presentations all follow today's format, 20 minute presentation by our experts, and then 10 minute live questions and answer. If you have any question at any time, please submit them in the question box that is located at the bottom of the GoToWebinar panel. This uh, webinar will be recorded and you will receive the recording after the live session. But of course, uh, it is better for you to stay until the end as it is the occasion to have uh, Dr. Bizo answer your questions live. Before starting, I will just say a few words about Neuroservices Alliance for those who don't know us. We are a consortium of CNS CROs specialized in in vitro and in vivo electrophysiological and behavioral studies. Our goal is to deliver endpoints facilitating decision making to our clients for their CNS drug discovery programs. We value direct and efficient interaction with our clients and we rely on a team of more than 50 PhD scientists. As a guest speaker, we have Dr. Jean-Charles Bizeau with us today. He is the Chief Executive Officer and Research Manager of North Services Alliance member KIOPS. Hello, Jean-Charles, and uh, I would let you take hello. the lead from here. Hello, Diane. Uh, hello, everybody. Thank you, Diane. So my name is uh, Jean-Charles Bizeau. Uh, as said, Diane, I am the CEO of uh, KIOPS. I am a neuroscientist and a specialist in in vivo preclinical tests in rodents. And I have uh, over uh, 35 years of experience in the behavioral and psychopharmacological research. KIOPS is a preclinical contract research organization founded in 2000 by uh, Fabrice Trovero, the managing director of the company, who is a neuropharmacologist, and uh, myself. KIOPS offers in vivo models in rodents designed to highlight the therapeutic potency of drugs for the treatment of nervous system disease. We propose to our clients a large variety of tests which cover a broad range of nervous system disease. This includes uh, psychiatric, neurodegenerative or neurodevelopmental disorders, for example, uh, schizophrenia, Parkinson disease, autism and uh, many others. In 2007, we have begun to implement some models to evaluate the potential therapeutic effects of compounds for the treatment of attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. And since then, we have achieved more than 80 studies for, uh, on ADHD for uh, different clients all over the world. Attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, or ADHD, is the most common neuropsychiatric disorder encountered in children and adolescents. It affects about 5% of children. The major symptoms of ADHD are attention problems, hyperactivity and impulsivity. The most commonly currently prescribed drugs for ADHD are psychostimulants. This includes methylphenidate and amphetamine and a non-stimulant noradrenaline reuptake inhibitor, atomoxetine. Uh, however, the, the need of new compounds with a better efficacy on the less undesirable side effects remains a major objective. Uh, because impulsivity attention deficit and hyperactivity are the three main symptoms of ADHD. We have implemented three different tests to measure these three different symptoms in rats. And because ADHD mainly concerns children and adolescents, we have chosen to carry out these tests on juvenile or adolescent animals. So the first model I will speak about is a test of impulsivity. 
There are different aspects of impulsivity, and one aspect is the inability of the impulsive subject to wait to tolerate a delay between an action and its outcome. So the principle of the delay discounting task is to put the rat into a situation where it has to choose between a large but delayed reward and a small immediate reward. The test takes place in a T-maze consisting of a starting runway, which leads uh, to two arms, each one leading to a goal box provided with a food reward. One goal box, for example, the left one, is always provided by a large reward, five food pellets, and the other goal box is always uh, provided with a small reward. At the first step, rats are trained to choose the large reward, and then the delay discounting task starts after this training period when all animals choose the large reward in 80 to 100% of trials. So the test is illustrated in this slide. The rat is introduced in the starting runway. If it chooses the arm leading to the large reward, it is blocked in this arm for 15 seconds before being able to enter into the goal box and to eat, eat the reward. Otherwise, if the rat chooses the arm leading to the small reward, it has an immediate access to the goal box and to the reward. Animals are subjected once per day to 10 trial sessions divided into two blocks of five trials. And the index of impulsivity is the number of choices for the large delayed reward. The effect of a typical drug used for the treatment of ADHD, methylphenidate, is illustrated in this slide. So during a first training period, with no delay before the large reward, rats learn to choose the large reward in 80 to 100% of trials without, within uh, four sessions. Then they were divided into two groups, one control group which received vehicle before test, the white circles, and uh, the other group which received methylphenidate, the red squares. So at the fifth session, without any delay before the large reward, methylphenidate do not modify the percentage of choices for the large reward. Then a 15 second delay was introduced before the large reward. The uh, control rats showed a percentage of choices for the large or no delayed reward which decreased across uh, sessions. And uh, for animals uh, which received methylphenidate, they also showed a decrease of the percentage of choice for the large delayed reward, but it was, it was less pronounced than, than uh, for uh, the, the control animals. And at the last sessions, all animals received the same, uh, the same treatment, saline. So this shows that methylphenidate has improved rats' ability to wait. So this means that methylphenidate improved impulsivity in this test. We have conducted many studies using the delay discounting task. This model has a very good predictive validity. Uh, drugs which improve impulsivity in ADHD, ADHD uh, subjects, like uh, psychostimulants, methylphenidate or amphetamine, or uh, noradrenaline uptake inhibitor like adormoxetine, also decrease impulsivity in juvenile rats. Now, the second model I will uh, speak about is a test of attention. The test is called the two-choice visual discrimination task. This is a test of visuospatial attention. In this test, adolescent rats are trained to press a lever paired with a light stimulus of variable, stimulus, variable duration between 0.5 and 10 seconds to obtain a food reward. 
on the successful completion of the task depends on selective attention to visual stimuli. Rats are trained during 80, oh, sorry, during, uh, during daily sessions of uh, 80 trials. So the test takes place in an operant conditioning chamber equipped with two retractable levers on which the rat can press on two stimulus light, one stimulus light above each lever. At each trial, the two levers are presented with one light on above one lever, which is referred as a cued lever, and the other light off above the other lever, the non-cued lever. The duration of presentation of the levers on the light is variable between 0.5 and 10 seconds for the light and an additional half second for the levers. During this trial, if the rat presses the cued lever, it receives a full reward and the two levers are retracted and it switches the light off. This is a correct response. However, if the rat presses the non cube lever, the two levers are retracted, it switches the light off, and the reward is not delivered. It is an incorrect response. And if the rat does not make any lever press during the trial, the two levers are retracted, it switches the light off, and the reward is not delivered. This is a response omission. So this is summarized in this slide. At the beginning of the trial, the levers are retracted and the lights are off. After 10 seconds, the two levers are presented and the light is switched on above one lever, the cube lever. The light remains on for 0 0.5, 1, 2, or 10 seconds, or until a lever press, with the same probability of 25% for each duration. On levers are available for the same duration plus 0.5 seconds. If the rat press the Q lever, it receives the reward and after light, uh, the light is off and the levers are retracted. If it press the non Q lever, it does not receive any reward and uh, the light is switched off on the lever retracted. And if the animal uh, does not make any lever press before the time limit, no reward is no reward is delivered. And the following trial starts 10 seconds after. So as I said, the test sessions include 80 trials with 0 0.5, 1, 2, and 10 seconds stimuli, and 20 trials for each stimulus duration. So there is a at, at the beginning of the conditioning, there is a training period of two weeks, and uh, drugs are tested uh, when animals are uh, six to seven weeks old, and treatments are administered subclinically. A typical experiment includes 10 sessions, with one session per day, one initial vehicle session, eight drug sessions, and one final vehicle session. On four indices of attention are recorded. The number of correct responses, the press on cued lever that are rewarded. The number of incorrect responses, the number of press on non cued lever, and response omission. So no lever press during the trial. And these uh, indices are particularly relevant uh, for a short stimulus duration. The fourth uh, index of attention is the reaction time for correct response. That is the delay between the presentation of the light on the levers on the, the correct response. And this uh, variable is particularly relevant for long duration stimuli, two or 10 seconds. The effect of a, a typical drug used for treatment of ADHD, amphetamine, is illustrated in this slide. The figure represents the number of correct responses made at trials with 0.5 on one second stimuli, 
during the 10 experimental sessions. So at the first session, all animals received saline before the test. Then they were divided into two groups, which received either vehicle for the white circles or amphetamine one milligram per kilogram, the, 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 the red squares before the test. As we can see, amphetamine increased the number of correct responses, uh, both for uh, 0 0.5 second stimuli and 1 second uh, stimuli. We can see also that amphetamine decreased the number of incorrect responses and decreased the number of omissions uh, made by animals. And finally, amphetamine, so it's a decrease of omissions. Amphetamine shortens the reaction time for correct response to long uh, stimuli, uh, for example, for 10 second uh, stimulus. So this data illustrates the uh, attention enhancing effect of uh, amphetamine. The last model I will speak about is a test of hyperactivity. The test, this test is carried out using a particular strain of rats, the spontaneous hypertensive rat or SHR. So since a, a long time, since more, more than 20 years, spontaneous hypertensive rats has been promoted as an animal model of ADHD. However, the, the translational validity of this model remains in debates. And in our experience, stimulant drugs like methylphenidate and amphetamine do not improve impulsivity uh, in the delay discounting task and do not improve attention in the two choice uh, visual di discrimination task. So this is the reason why we do not use uh, this train of rats for these two tests. But in contrast, hyperactivity of SHR in comparison with its normotensive strain, the Wistar Kyoto rat, is very well established. So the test we are using uh, uh, consists in recording spontaneous locomotor activity in an open field. The readouts are the horizontal activity, that is the distance traveled, and the vertical activity, that is the number of free rings. So juvenile rats are individually placed for a first 30 minute session in the, in the apparatus, the habituation period, and then they receive the treatment and are placed again in the open field for a two hour session. These figures represent the horizontal activity and the vertical activity of rats during the two hour session after administration of treatments. As we can see, SHR, the black bars, show a dramatic hyperactivity, so an increase of horizontal activity and an increase of vertical activity in comparison with uh, with star Kyoto rats, the control strain. And atomoxetine, uh, the non-stimulant treatment of ADHD, those dependently decreases both horizontal activity and vertical activity uh, in, this, in, uh, in this test. So atomoxetine, uh, atomoxetine uh, SHR, which has received atomoxetine at 3 mg per kilogram, shows uh, an activity that is not very different to that of W uh, with star Kyoto, Kyoto rats. So, in conclusion, the three models that I have presented here allow to examine the effects of new compounds developed for treatment of ADHD on the three core symptoms of ADHD, impulsivity, which is examined using the delayed discounting task in TMAZE, inattention, which is examined in the two-choice visual discrimination task in operant chamber, and hyperactivity, which is recorded in a 
spontaneous hypertensive rats in open field. Thank you for uh, your attention. And now, uh, please ask questions if, if you have any. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Jean Charles. Uh, we do have a couple questions. Uh, first one: Did you test the effect of serotonin reuptake inhibitors in this delayed discounting task? Uh, yes, we have tested the we have tested the, the paroxetine in uh, in the, in this test, and the uh, paroxetine uh, was effective. It uh, it improved impulsivity in the delayed discounting task. Uh, in in the more uh, very ancient studies, uh, serotonin uptake inhibitors have also been tested in the delayed discounting task, but it was in uh, in adult uh, animals, and uh, it was also effective to to improve impulsivity in uh, non-juvenile animals. Okay, thank you. Uh, another one, what would you consider as the best target to treat ADHD? Ah, it's a complicated question. Um, based on our experience, the um, dopamine and noradrenaline systems uh, uh, seems to be uh, an effective target. Uh, and probably also uh, also serotonin, uh, but um, I know that there is a, there is some some new compounds. We are we have different other targets. For instance, in, in my knowledge, uh, the the compounds that are uh, really effective in uh, ADHD uh, patients uh, are uh, more focused on uh, on uh, dopamine or uh, noradrenaline. Okay. Um, why don't you use the five choice serial reaction time task, which is a more common test for attention? Instead of the two choice test. Uh, yes, it's it's a question uh, uh, that is uh, frequently called because uh, the five choice test is a uh, is a very popular test uh, for uh, for attention. Uh, the main problem for us with the five choice test is that it is a test which needs. Uh, a very very long uh, long duration of training uh, for animals about uh, at least uh, one month and uh, more of, more frequently uh, six uh, six weeks so it's not possible uh, in this test to to test the compounds on animals when they are still juveniles so it's the reason why we have chosen the the two choice test which was was initially uh, used in uh, in mice, and we have adapted it in uh, in juvenile animals. It is because the test needs uh, two weeks uh, to be to be learned. So we are able to test uh, drugs when animals are still uh, juvenile or uh, adolescent. But uh, the five choice is, uh, is is a good test for uh, uh, for, for attention. Thank you. Uh, we have another question. Uh, are the reference compounds that you illustrate the activity, uh, are they effective in each of the three assays? Oh, so um, in, um, in, in, in the test of impulsivity, the DDT in TMAs, uh, Stimulants and non-stimulants are effective. In the five choice, uh, amphetamine and uh, methylphenidate are, uh, are, uh, are effective uh, and improve, uh, improve uh, attention in this test. We have made some tests with uh, atomoxetine and uh, the effectiveness was not very good in, uh, in this test in, uh, for, um, for, for attention. And uh, 
when we see also some some other tests like uh, five choice uh, serial reaction time task uh, which was uh, uh, previously mentioned uh, the effects of uh, of atomoxetine are uh, it depends on the, on the publications in some cases it's effective in other cases it's not very effective and in uh, the test of hyperactivity in SHR rats, so we have tested um, atomoxetine is, is very effective. Uh, methylphenidate and uh, amphetamine is not uh, very effective on the hyperactivity in, uh, in, in this strain. So we, we can say that for, uh, for impulsivity, the three main classes of, uh, of drugs are effective. In attention uh, test, uh, it's more the stimulants uh, of vitamin on methylphenidate, and in SHR hyperactivity, it's more uh, noradrenaline and tech inhibitors like uh, atomoxetine. Okay, thanks. Uh, and one last question for now. Is there any data measuring impulsivity in the two choice test? And if so, is uh, does amphetamine decreases impulsivity in this test? Um, yes, there is um, there is one uh, one parameter that is a good uh, a good index of impulsivity in the, in the in the two choice. Uh, it is the, the premature response. So what we call premature responses, it is the the response that are uh, emitted last la, uh, less than uh, 0.3 seconds after the presentation of the levers on uh, on the light. So we we can know that it's really probably a, an impulsive response because about half of uh, this response are rewarded, and the other half is not rewarded. So they are made at random on the one or the other uh, or the other level, and um, this uh, this res this uh, premature response are uh, not uh, significantly. In, in some cases, we have found a slight decrease of um, the premature response uh, by amphetamine. But it was very slight, and it was not uh, very consistent across studies. So it seemed that uh, for this parameter, uh, the, the drugs like amphetamine or methylphenidate are not uh, very effective to reduce impulsivity in as assessed by the premature response in this uh, in this test. Okay. Well, uh, thank you very much for your answer, Jean-Charles. Uh, we don't have any more questions for now. So what I suggest is that uh, we can uh, uh, end uh, the webinar. Uh, thank you very much, Jean-Charles, for your very comprehensive presentation. You're welcome. Uh, as uh, someone is actually asking me right now, the presentation have been recorded and everyone who registered for the webinar will receive the, the full recording of the presentation. So please do not hesitate to, to reach out to us and you will have the, the opportunity to follow up also in the email you will receive later. Thank you very much for attending and, uh, and we look forward to seeing you at uh, our next online events. Okay, thank bye you. Everyone. Bye, Jean-Charles. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.